Hello and welcome to another segment of Ask a Farinarian. My name is Brian Eidelman. Today I'll be talking about unexplained weight loss or lack of weight gain in your horse. Um, this all starts with a thorough investigation. First question to ask is, are they actually being fed what you think they're being fed? This may seem a little pointless to ask, but it, it really is a big part of the investigation and a great place to start. It all comes down usually to a miscommunication or a misunderstanding uh, between the owner, the management, and the barn crew. How many pounds are they actually being fed? Uh, how many flakes are they actually being fed? How big is a flake? What's the consistency in management uh, from day to day and from feeding to feeding? Uh, the next question to ask, and again, may seem a little silly, but really worth asking, is are they actually eating what they're being fed? Are they just using it as a bed? Are they eating the tasty parts and letting the rest just blow away? Is the horse next to them waiting for it to drop down and snatching it under the fence? Is it a herd dynamic problem? Um, is it a lower totem, uh, lower pecking order horse and is just simply being pushed off by some of the other horses? Um, Oftentimes, all of the horses may have plenty of time to eat and plenty of piles to work on, but the dominant horses are going from pile to pile, eating the, uh, the best stuff, the tastiest stuff, and leaving just the stems and stalks for everyone else. So just because everyone's eating doesn't mean they're all getting the same quality of feed. Um, what's the feed delivery system? Is it in a bucket or a trough? Is it just spread out on the pasture? Um, is it um, based out of a, a, a slow feeder, whether it's a hay net or kind of a wire grate? Oftentimes, the slow feeders actually tend to be too inefficient, and some horses really struggle to physically pull enough hay out, even throughout the day, um, to supplement all of their needs. An underused product and tool is a simple hay analysis. It's it's an important point in the process to be intentional. Put a name to a problem if there is one. You're about to spend a lot of money on potentially useless or unnecessary supplements. Um, I googled it, uh, Hay Analysis Labs Colorado. Several labs came up. You have lots of options to pick from. You can actually send it just up to CSU, uh, soiltestinglab.colostate.edu. It's 32 bucks. It's less than a bag of supplements. Um, it's a good time to bring in some outside assistance in the form of a veterinarian. Doing a good thorough physical exam, including a dental exam, helps you evaluate uh, a lot of things, but amongst others, the quality of dentition. How are their teeth? Uh, a good dental float by a licensed veterinarian or a qualified lay dentist under direct veterinary supervision really can increase your horse's feed efficiency with all else being the same. You can also consider doing blood work. Look for underlying disease processes, some inflammation, things that are working against you through this process. You can do a fecal analysis. Simply see what's coming out the back end. What are they not digesting? What can we help them with? You can also do a fecal egg count. It's worth reevaluating your parasite management and kind of your overall husbandry uh, strategies. Uh, you can pop over and watch the video on uh, deworming strategies. A lot of times, high parasite loads are a better indication of uh, management strategies that need to be rethought more than a primary parasite problem. Uh, good management strategies tend to uh, fix parasite problems uh, on their own. Another thing to look at is what's the exercise or activity level of the horse? Are they being ridden excessively given your goals? If your goal involves a heavy workload, don't expect a heavy horse. If you need to ride and work your horse right now, then expect slower results and slower gains, slower progress. Before answering the common question I get of my horse isn't gaining weight, what supplement should I feed? What else should I feed? I want you to just stop and back up a bit. Um, I can't stress enough how important the things we've just talked about really are in terms of coming up with a good solution. Reevaluate the questions of, are they actually being fed what you think they're being fed? Are they actually eating what you think they're being fed? What's in the hay? 
are there underlying uh, disease or dental issues that we can really easily correct? If you haven't addressed these first questions, everything else we're about to talk about is useless or very close to it. You can get so much more out of this by establishing your base and addressing steps one, two, and three before moving on to four, five, and six. Um, so we know they're being fed the correct amount now. We've clarified what a flake is. We know that both the morning and the afternoon feed crews are aware of our horse's needs. Um, they're all on the same page. We've arranged to convert it from just a two-a-day feeding to a three-a-day feeding, so they're more likely to actually eat what they're fed. We've done an analysis, so now we know that this batch of hay, even though it looks pristine, is a little lower in protein than we thought, or this batch of hay is actually a little higher in undigestible um, carbs than we thought, a little higher in undigestible fiber. So we need to help them with that. And we had his teeth floated, you know, a couple months ago. It helped some, just not enough. So some simple first steps, and what everybody tends to be looking for um, is if you're getting first cutting, look at getting second or third cutting. Uh, for more info on this, you can pop over and read my nutrition blog. It's about a 10 to 15 minute read, depending on how fast you are. I'm more of the 15 minute variant. It looks daunting, but there really is a lot of good information. So just take some time, uh, take a read through it, circle back to it uh, at any time you feel like it's not going anywhere. A lot of good information in there. Another idea is to buy your hay in as large amount as is reasonably possible. This just simply allows for more consistency in feeding throughout the year and throughout from month to month, rather than going down and getting the five to 10 bales that'll fit in the back of your truck uh, of whatever the feed store happens to have in stock at that point. Another product you can look at is chaff hay. It's a kind of partially fermented, highly digestible uh, hay. Um, it does have a high moisture content, so it does create a little bit of a management uh, difficulty here through the winter in Colorado. It just likes to freeze, and so you simply store it at a little warmer temperature, and problem solved. Uh, really is uh, some good stuff. Some other things to look at are alfalfa or grass pellets. You can also add to that some just good name brand senior feed, whether it's Neutrina, Purina, Omeline, Ranchway. All of these things are good steps simply because they're well-rounded uh, rations and just simply offer more energy per pound. I get asked about the following product quite a bit. I'm just going to answer it straightforward and honestly with you guys. Beet pulp. It's the nutritional equivalent of cardboard. It's the horse version of rice cakes. Um, it's empty bulk and it only fills a fiber roll. Beet pulp 100% of the time impedes weight gain, and it's a huge choking risk. Unless you have the horse that's a fraction of a percent that has no teeth and can only gum down senior feeds as a way of staying alive and needs that fiber boost, there is no reason to be feeding beet pulp. Next thing you can do is, again, just reevaluate the exercise level. Time-tested way to lose weight is exercise more, eat less. So to gain weight, swap that. You eat more and exercise less. Don't ride your horse and work them hard every day and expect them to put on much weight. It's not how horses work. Again, I direct you to the nutrition blog. It really helps to explain why that is what it is. Um, in summary, just do a thorough investigation. You're not trying to point fingers. You're just trying to honestly find the holes in the system where improvements can be made. Have a good physical exam done. Um, look at the overall health of your horse. Rethink their lifestyle and their workload. Bottom line, put a name to the problem so you can go about intelligently fixing it. Thanks for watching. If you like it, share it. Um, follow us on Facebook, help spread the word, help others take better care of their horses as well. Thanks so much.